Okay, my friends, as promised, I'm sharing with you my results from my 100 day carnivore challenge to myself. Um, for those of you that follow my channel, you know that um, I experiment with different types of dieting just to see um, how I feel. Um, I don't necessarily uh, subscribe to one size fits all and I know that my dietary needs have changed quite a bit as I age and once I went into menopause um, it seemed like my my results kind of staled it's like I was almost like at war with my body trying to figure out what was gonna work and what wasn't gonna work and in that process of trying to figure things out I came across carnivore videos and I was very curious I guess and I did a little bit of experimenting here and there. I did a three day protocol where it was just beef and butter. It's called a beef and butter fast, which is interesting because you're not really fasting, but I was able to lose a few pounds and bust through a plateau with that. And so it gave me a little bit of confidence and I thought, huh, I'll try a 30 day uh, protocol. And I had some good results with that too. Although I still preface this with a little bit of information about me. I am not a huge meat fan. My, I was actually a vegetarian for, I wouldn't say very, very long time, but I just chose not to eat meat just because I didn't like the way it tasted more than anything when I was a teenager. Plus my dad was a vegetarian, so I was kind of introduced to that lifestyle. Um, so I'm not really a big meat fan. It's okay. Like I know that it makes tacos taste better, but yeah, so I'm just prefacing that. So I didn't really, wasn't really looking forward to doing a 100 day meat challenge just because I don't particularly enjoy chewing on meat. It's just not something that I like. I don't know if it's a texture thing or what, but, um, but I decided after listening to a lot of the research out there about the carnivore diet and following Dr. Gabrielle Lyon online and listening to some of her podcasts and things. I was like, you know, I'm really going to try this. Now, Dr. Ken Berry as well. So I'm going to try this, you know, like I need to heal my adrenals. I'm pretty sure my adrenals have been shot since I was like three. I grew up in a very rough home. Um, I needed to heal my adrenals. Like I wanted to bust through this plateau that it feels like, you know, menopause just kind of deposited me here and said, okay, well, looks like you're just going to have this body for the rest of your life. I am like, no, I will fight this tooth and nail. I will figure it out. So I've been online researching. And those were, there was three goals that I had for doing the carnivore diet. One was, like I said, um, to heal my adrenals. The second thing was to get out of my plateau um, and kind of battle some of this menopausal standstill I've been at, even though I've been doing all the things, working out, eating salads, like, you know, watching what I eat, eating, prioritizing healthy fats, you know, reducing the toxins by not having, you know, all the processed foods and things like that. I was doing all the things, but I wasn't getting the results that I thought I should get. And being over 50, right, things start to change. And so I was like, well, okay. And so I'm listening to these experts. Let's find a new panel of experts to listen to. Let's, let's find out what's going to work for me personally, not necessarily for everybody, but what's going to work for me in my time in my life. Uh, the third goal that I had was to prioritize protein to be able to gain muscle tissue and connective tissue. Now, if you've ever listened to a Dr. Gabrielle Lyon uh, podcast, you'll understand that she says that the most important thing as we age is to maintain our muscle mass and, and to put more muscle on. As we age, especially women, if we, if we don't continue to resistance train, to gain muscle, to, to do that, what happens is, is our health declines. And she actually specialized in geriatric care. I think she still does. I'm not sure. I know she's a practicing physician. But she explains why protein, especially leucine, is so important for us ladies as we age. So that was my protocol. That was my reason to do, to prioritize just meat protein, just meat for 100 days. You know, I did realize a couple of my goals and I didn't get one of them. And I'm just going to kind of break that down. What actually happened to me and to my body when I did this? Um, first thing I'm going to say is that my diet was pretty boring. I'm not going to make any bones about it. I'm not going to pretend like I enjoyed it. I honestly loathed having to have beef and eggs or whatever I was having the first 
probably the first 30 days if it was meat products and it was or protein other than milk and honey those two items i didn't partake in at all in animal products because of their sugar content um, but in the first 30 days i even had things like some yogurt that was low sugar i allowed myself i kind of eased my way into it i guess is what i'm trying to say the second 30 days so up until about 60 days and i took myself off the yogurts and things like that and it was more just meats right I, I i had chicken and bacon and beef and it wasn't like big steaks i'm not a like i said i'm not a big meat fan so i don't really like to sit and cut into a steak and chew on it it's like not my thing so I was having a lot of ground beef because I found that it was easier for me to eat and digest. And there's actually some research that says it's better because it's pre-broke up or something. I'm not sure. I think I saw that in a Dr. Berg video. But I was having just meats, right? Meats and some dairy products, some cheeses and things. The third 30 days, or actually 40 because it was 100 days. Yeah, so the last, well, the last 30 days of the challenge, I did... I prioritized beef, butter, and eggs, and I can tell you for 30 days, uh, by the time I was counting down, I don't know if it was the minutes, I was counting down the minutes to when it would be over, but I had made a promise to myself that I was going to give it a good try for 100 days and see what happened, and I was going to see it out, irregardless of how nauseous it was making me, and I'm just joking, it wasn't making me nauseous, but I just certainly wasn't excited to sit down and eat a meal. But I'm going to keep this protocol in the toolbox. And I don't know if it's so much like I'm going to do 100 days moving forward, but definitely the three-day beef and butter fasts are going to be a tool in my toolbox moving forward. Um, and the reason why is because, guys, the results were insane. I am super excited to share my body comp goals with you and what actually happened. So my final stats, um, my, so I released 14.2 pounds of body fat or just in poundage. We're not exactly sure exactly where that's at, but I've, I dropped 14.2 pounds. My BMI percentage dropped 2.3%. Guys, that's huge. My fat percentage, now my fat percentage, this is what I'm trying to lose, right? Lose the fat and gain the muscle at the same time. That's where I've been struggling. My fat percentage dropped 2.7%. Wow. I am now officially, since I was a teenager, now I am officially under 30% body fat. I am super excited about that. I, my muscle increased by 2%. I increased muscle percentage by 2%. Wow. I'm now 1.2% more muscle than fat. <laughs> I was like, yes. I was so excited about that, you guys. I was literally like dancing when I got off the, off the scale this morning. I took off a total of 12 inches off my body total took off 12 inches 12 that's huge just in my waist alone was 2.5 inches just in my waist and that as far as health goes and as far as like dieting goes that's the one metric that they tell you to measure even the people that tell you stay off the scales you know the, the people that say that they all agree that measuring your waist, as long as you're dropping in your waist, you are losing body fat. And that is a, that's a health marker. The, the leaner you are in your waist circumference is a health marker. And there's actually new research that suggests the larger your circumference of your waist, the smaller your brain. That's for another video. That blew me away. And mainly because I'm worried about that because my mom has dementia and Alzheimer's. So because that because my mom's struggling with that I wanted to learn as much as I could about brain health and how to keep my mind healthy because this is a painful journey watching my mother wither away mentally is so painful I don't want my kids to go through that so I tried to learn as much as I could 
so that I could support my health in any way possible, my brain health any way possible. Um, so yeah, isn't that crazy, you guys? Two point two and a half inches in just my waist alone. And I gained, this is the crazy thing. Now, ladies, listen to this. I gained a half inch in my bust tissue. Now, most of us lose, right? And I've definitely had that happen. You know, when I lost, originally lost the 75 pounds, I lost breast tissue. Um, because it's it's fat, right? It's fat reserves. So, of course, that's going to go down as you lose weight. But that was one thing I was a little worried about. Like, I don't want to be flat chested. And when I was looking into doing a bikini competition, I was like, most of those girls have boob jobs. I mean, let's just be honest about it. You know, they get down, they get their body percent of fat so low that they end up losing most of their breast tissue. So not all of them. But I would say a really, really good portion of them have breast implants, have boob jobs done, and or they're wearing little pads and things to kind of boost it up and look good on stage, have a good stage presence so that they're not flat chested. And that's the reality of it. And so as I was doing some research into that, I realized there's a, an author that put out a book. I can't remember exactly what the book, book is called, but her name is Dr. Elizabeth Bright. She wrote a book about butter and how that it helps girls keep their curves or put tissue back on. And I it worked because I prioritized quite a bit of butter after learning that um, because I'm a coffee drinker. I put it in my coffee every morning. That was the vehicle to get it in my body because I certainly wasn't slathering it on bread, right? I used to love toast back in the day and I would dip it in oatmeal. That's another story. But um, yeah, I was having a tablespoon of butter in my coffee. I drank three cups of coffee every morning and I would have a tablespoon of butter in each cup. And I kind of, at first I kind of worried about that. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of butter. And we were taught, you know, we come from that low fat era that, you know, eating fat is bad and that you're going to get fat if you eat fat. Well, the opposite has happened and the fat's going on in the places that it's supposed to be and being removed from the areas where we don't want it. So I'm super excited about my carnivore results. I'm really grateful that I hung in there, that I made that promise to myself that I was going to do it for 100 days and I did. I got the results I was looking for. I'm super excited except for one. And that, the one that I didn't get the results in is I wanted to heal my adrenals. Well, truth be told, I know that caffeine is a stimulant. I know that. And I know that adrenal health, if you want to heal your adrenals, you really have to cut the coffee out. And I didn't do that, right? I, even though I was on a corner, carnivore protocol, I kept drinking coffee every morning. It's that one thing that I know I'm still addicted to. Like, okay, I quit smoking. I was a pack-a-day smoker, right? I quit eating the sugars and the treats and all the fried donuts and the pastries and things like that. I stopped eating pasta. I stopped eating rice. I stopped eating bread and, and cereal. I, I stopped all of that. Those were all addictions for me. I was very addicted to all of those things. Coffee is the one thing that I have not conquered yet. I'm just being really open and honest. Like, I just have not conquered it. I'm literally like an hour away from Seattle. <clears throat> and if you guys know anything about Seattle, we are we're coffee people, right? Starbucks is right there. Wherever I work, there's a Starbucks. It doesn't matter. I don't really prefer Starbucks. I if I go to a coffee stand, I prefer the little mom and pop ones. It's actually one right down the street that I just love. The lady's a sweetheart and I just love their coffee stand. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I'm still addicted to coffee. So I actually have started since I understand the importance of healing my adrenals. I think I'm going to go down to a half calf coffee and because I love the way it smells and I love the way it tastes and I love the way it makes me feel all homey on the inside. And I don't want to give that up just yet, but I do want to reduce the amount of caffeine I'm bringing into my body. So I've decided to do half calf and I've started to kind of sneaky get it in um, without going through all the the headaches and things because if I'm if I just stop caffeine right now I know 
<laughs> then I'm going to be no good to anybody for probably four days. I'm going to have horrible headaches because I've tried it before. So I'm going to do it sneaky. I'm, I've already started doing it. I've been replacing a couple of scoops of coffee every morning with, uh, with decaf and I'm not at half of it yet, but over the next week I plan to be down at the end of the week down to half calf and just staying there for a while until I feel like maybe I can just quit coffee or just go complete decaf. I don't know, but I'm, I'm working on it and I'm excited about what I could do when I give it up. Um, but yeah, that was my 100 day carnivore protocol. Those were the goals that I had. Those were, that's what's exactly what happened. But I want to share two more pieces of information with you. And they are surprising things that happened to me when I went on a 100 day carnivore protocol. The first one I did talk about in a short, and that was there was very little waste on the carnivore protocol. Uh, I was regular every day, but, or maybe went a day or two without, just depending on how much volume. I just, like, there were days when I just couldn't eat very much of it. And so there was hardly anything, right? So there was very small amount of waste on the carnivore diet, which told me, which that's what I wanted, my body was replacing tissues, right? It was using, because here I was, I was bringing in this volume of meat, right? I was eating, uh, what, 100 grams of protein plus per day. I was trying to make sure I got in like 150 grams of protein a day. So here I was bringing in all this food and there was very little waste. So my body was using it. It was making connective tissues. Um, we as moms know that when we're pregnant, if we don't get, like say we're sick and we just can't eat, the, the fetus will take what it needs from our bodies, right? That's why it's so important for us to take care of our teeth and to eat properly and take our vitamins. They, they, they tell us that when we get pregnant. Well, the same thing is true when you don't eat a healthy diet. Your body will borrow from Peter to pay Paul, right? If it's got to keep your, your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, your brain, all of that functioning, right? And if you don't take in a proper nutrition, that was me before, before this lifestyle change. I was either A, eating, you know, hardly anything and measuring every morsel. And my idea of eating a healthy breakfast was a bowl of Special K with Splenda on it and skim milk, right? There's no nutrition in that, right? That was my idea. And I was either A, I was eating like that, which there's hardly any nutrition in my protocol that I was eating, or B, I was eating all the stuff, all the junk, all the, and there was no in between for me back then. It was, so I spent years getting very little nutrition in my body. So my body was always borrowing from my joints and, and the little bits of what it needed to keep my organs going to keep the important parts of our body functioning properly your body will pull from other tissues right we know this right it's a medical fact well the fact that I had very little waste told me that my body was doing that it was repairing all those tissues that had been damaged from la from malnutrition from not feeding myself properly so like I felt so much better after I went on keto, but I still had little tiny aches and pains here and there, but nothing, nothing now. Like my knees, like every once in a while, if I sat too long in a certain position, like it would start to have pain. I don't have that anymore. And that tells me that my body replaced those tissues, right? That's exciting. The second thing that I noticed that was really weird was I don't need underarm deodorant anymore. I've always worn deodorant and I was a secret person. I wanted to wear like a high quality, what I felt like was high quality deodorant. The last few years I had started using um, like more natural brands, uh, but I don't use it anymore. I don't need it. Um, and then I got a second opinion. I asked my husband, I was like, Liz, am I just nose blind? Cause I'm not, I don't smell anymore at all. And he's like, no, you really don't. So I haven't been wearing underarm deodorant probably a month. I ran out and I just never replaced it. I, I meant to. I went a few days. That's actually how it happened. I ran out. What actually happened was I went to put it on and the top just kind of busted and fell apart. And I was like, oh, that's weird. And so I threw it away. And then the next day was crazy. Nika was helping my daughter with the grandkids or something. And I was like, oh, my God, I forgot deodorant. I got to get it. And I just, I don't know. It just 
I didn't, I think I went a few days and I was like, do I even need it? It was really weird how that happened, but I haven't used it and I don't think I need it anymore. And I've actually heard from a couple of different podcasts that I listened to that people have noticed that on a, on a carnivore protocol. And I think the beef and butter gal had a, a forum where they talked about that. I think it, so if you want to like check that out, maybe just research it. I don't remember the exact podcast I was listening to, but anyway, I just wanted to share those, the, the results and how excited I am that this worked. I'm going, like I said, this, I'm going to keep this in my toolbox. I'm going to keep using it when I feel like I need to. Right now I'm on a, I'm back on keto, more, more keto more. I am still prioritizing nutrition, meat nutritionally meat and, and protein, but I love vegetables. Like I, I heard some of those podcasts where they said meat, you know, vegetables are trying to kill you and those kind of things. I'm not sure I agree with all that. Actually, I don't agree with all that. Um, I feel like we need vegetables, but I also know that there were times in human history where we didn't have access to fresh greens and you know, all the things that they're telling us that we should eat on a daily basis. I know that there was times when our ancestors didn't have access to those kind of foods. I mean, like for instance, winter, right? There was a time when people starved to death during the winter, if they couldn't find a, an animal to bring home to feed the tribe, like people would start dying of starvation. And so there had to be uh, some health benefit to bringing meat in. And I don't think that, I don't necessarily think vegan is all that healthy. I'm not, I'm not a vegan hater. If you can do it and, and do it right and still get enough protein, by all means, especially if you just can't eat it because you love animals that much and you don't want to eat them. But I doubt that during the time when when our ancestors were facing starvation, if they didn't find a bison or some deer or something to feed the tribe or their family, I think they just took it in gratitude to be able to keep living, right? If you, there, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of um, the lion diet, but it's actually been coined by Michaela Peterson and she eats like a lioness, literally, she eat, she cooks her food, but <laughs> but it's called the lion diet, and that got me thinking a lot too. So, like I said, I'm back on keto. I love vegetables, and I was super excited. If you follow me on social media at all, you'll see that I was super excited to have like broccoli slaw. I'm like woohoo, yeah! <laughs> I was so happy. But um, I'm gonna be doing this through the holidays. I don't want to feel like just bored out of my mind during the holidays and I'm going to be sharing some of my my keto desserts and things that help me stay on track being a bakery manager and a sugar addict I like to have you know I like to have replacements for my old favorites and fudge is one of them and I'll be doing a live tomorrow on my healthy roots page on Facebook if you don't follow me on there make sure you join so that you can see my cooking lives and demonstrations um, super fast and easy and delicious recipe that you're going to be able to enjoy over the holidays i call it my holiday survival fudge so join me for that and thanks for listening bye